Water hammer. Have you ever heard this expression? It's used to express the head variations that take place when the water velocity is suddenly changed in the interior of a pipe. For example, when a valve is quickly closed in a transmission line or in a hydraulic power plant, if the closure time is too small, pressures greater than what the pipe can withstand can occur along the pipeline. This phenomenon also can happen in pumping systems. If the pump suddenly stops working, which can be caused by a power failure, pressures greater than what the pipe can withstand can occur along the pipeline. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I'm a retired professor of hydraulics. Now, I'm a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulic supply to sanitation works. Let's explain what happens here. This figure shows water flowing from a reservoir to a valve in the interior of a pipe. If you shut off the valve, the flowing water will stop its movement and be compressed against the closed valve. As a consequence, its density will increase, as well as the pipe diameter. This phenomenon will start at the valve and go through the pipeline as a pressure wave, until it reaches the reservoir. The wave velocity A is called celerity. There is a relationship between delta H and A, as we will see here. When the water flows, without having its properties change over time, we say that it's in a steady flow condition. When the water is not flowing, it's another steady flow condition. As the flow condition changes from one steady flow state to another, a transient flow condition occurs. It's in this condition that a water hammer will happen. Most of the hydraulic expressions, such as Bernoulli equation, are valid for steady flow conditions. For transient flow conditions, we must find other expressions, as you will see. It's important to know that the additional internal pressure that results from the water hammer creates a strain that will try to separate these two parts, as happened here. On the other hand, the internal pressure reduction creates a strain that will try to collapse the pipe, as happened here. As we said, we must find specific expressions for the transient flow conditions. This figure shows the pipe stretch in which the velocity change occurs. This is the control volume corresponding to the transient condition. It's moving to the left with celerity A. On its left side, no change has occurred yet. The water velocity is U0, the specific mass is ρ0, and the pipe section is A0. On its right side, some change has taken place. The water velocity is U, the specific mass is ρ, and the pipe section is A. For practical purposes, we'll assume that no important change was observed in rho and in the A value. In this stretch, the head changes from H0 to H. The length of this stretch is AT and the corresponding volume is AAT. Let's write the momentum equation for this water volume. It can be written again like this and again, and after these simplifications, we find this expression, known as Zhukovsky equation. An instantaneous closure of the valve, shown in this figure, will cause this head increase along the entire pipeline and this head reduction along the entire pipeline. And how much can this head variation be? Assuming that its celerity is something like 1000 meters per second, the gravity is 10 meters per second squared, and the water velocity is 1 meter per second, the head variation will be 100 meters. Not negligible, isn't it? Pay attention! 100 meters increase and 100 meters decrease. 
Well, the celerity value is important in these calculations. We must know how to find it. That's what we'll see in our next video. See you there! Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.